All right, we're just doing this on the phone because we don't have... All right, come on, you need to grab now. Look it back on shore there. You can zoom in, you can see. You can see there, there's my sleeping mat. And there's the tent. <laughs> so we'll go into the story, but unfortunately, Mike, I could just start fishing and mucking around here, but unfortunately, I left the cameras up in the tent last night. So once the current uh, chills a bit, because it's dead low tide now, we'll swim over and we'll get our bits and pieces and we'll start the day. And we'll have a chat about how the night went. Put this in the dry-ish section. <laughs> and we've got our goggles out. And we'll jump in here. There is actually quite a bit of coral in that, so I'll take the snorkel just so I don't whack my legs. Oh my God, look, there's a mosquito here. Get out of here. How do they find me out here? <laughs> Anyway, we're going to jump in, swim over to there. Uh, we'll leave the tent and everything set up because um, I won't be able to swim it back dry, but um, we'll just organise and we'll grab the camera and we'll pick it up from there. I won't be able to film this because I don't want to take my phone in the water. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, let's jump in. Well, that's amazing. Beautiful sunrise. But we're back online. <laughs> Hello. Um, uh, that was an interesting night. Um, yeah, like all in all, it's all right. Like, but uh, there's definitely some lessons learnt in regards of anchoring boats and and where to leave them and things like that. So last night started off great. Had dinner, just chilled out, watched the sunset, uh, and the boat was nice and high and dry by that stage. So we had nothing to worry about. Um, <laughs> I was just resting up and just chilling, no problems. I had plenty of time. The boat was just down here somewhere. Um, but you can see it's a lot of rocks there, but it was up on the sandy bit, so it was no problems. And I thought, well, as the tide comes up, I'll just move the boat up and then as it recedes, so I really don't have to worry about it until about 12 o'clock. I'll wake up if I've fallen asleep. I'll make sure I just pull it up further and further. And then when the tide drops, it'll be up nice, high and dry. Nothing to worry about, right? Or so I thought. So. What happened is at night, as the tide's coming in, the, there's a swell, like that ground surge and swell picks up again. And we knew that might happen a little bit, but I didn't think it would come from this side as well. So for some reason, even though the wind's blowing from the east at the moment, it was coming in here. You can see this ripple. Well, over this thin patch, especially on the sand, that turns into, that maybe triples in size. It doesn't seem that big, it's not super dangerous, but when it's constantly coming in and it picks up speed at this, at this shallow pit and it started smashing the boat over and over and over and I was like, oh man, I've got to get it out of here. So I moved the boat um, back into the water to get away from the rave because it really only hits on the, on the shoreline. So I moved it out, but then that started the dramas for the rest of the night of trying to avoid these rocks because basically the boat was over those rocks I knew the tide was going to drop so I couldn't end up on all of these rocks because that was going to be a big problem so I ended up having to move further and further out so what I did is I went out here somewhere and um, basically put my mattress on you can see my mattress is here I just dumped that in the morning because I was in a rush to push the boat further out so that's where that ended up <laughs> but um, yeah, I actually slept on the boat for the good part of the night and it was fine. I actually had a great sleep and I set my alarm for 3 or 3.30, I think maybe 3.30 because I knew we were going to go get to low tide again by that stage. So what happened, and I wasn't sure if I was in deep enough water to make sure I was like, I thought I was, but I was like, well, I'm not sure. I know it's very rocky here. Anyway, I wake up at 3.30 and I'm right on the rocks. So I was like, oh man, I've got to move here. I've got to get, <laughs> I've got to get it a bit further out again. But by this stage, it was really, really shallow. So I've, I've come in a little bit thinking maybe I can just get it on this little lip of sand before, before I'm too late. I got it all the way in here and it was rocks everywhere. I was like stumbling around in the wet and, uh, and it was a big mistake bringing it in here. So that's where I ditched the mattress. I just threw the mattress up here somewhere and then ran back. You can see the anchor where they had the anchor for two seconds. Ran up, chucked the mattress up here, ran back. Um, and because by this stage, those waves had also picked, caught me as well. So the waves were coming in and they'd filled like a bit of the back of the boat up again, a lot of the splashing. I went for a quick run in the boat and uh, drained the water off, hit the spot lock, which was great on the trolling motor and I've just been chilling there ever since until sunrise so 
that's been my morning. So all in all, I actually did get a lot of sleep. I'm not tired, but it was a bit stressful and I definitely learned some lessons about how to and how not to do it. And it's definitely, um, it's definitely showing me that I definitely need to suss out a um, some kind of boat uh, canopy or boat tent because I, if I just stayed on the boat, I would have been fine all night. I could have anchored up, I would have just chilled on the boat. So we'll do the swim back and um, yeah, and then we might uh, have a quick fish here, wait for the tide to come up, pack the tent up, and then once we've got tenty, we can uh, cruise off and go wherever we want for today. A lot of this wouldn't be so much of an issue on a lot of the other islands, but because this is just all hard coral here, there's only a small patch of salt, smaller sand, and then it just goes to these rocks all around the whole thing. It's rocks and coral. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah no um sleeping here last night was actually perfect there was plenty of room felt very comfortable but uh yeah i'd have to figure out if there was some kind of canopy just here i guess whether it'd keep out a bad storm or not probably not but it's definitely something i need to think about and be aware of how to navigate it I work pretty good actually and it folds up to pretty much nothing which is cool and the old pillow sort of sprung a leak so we replaced it with this it wasn't overly expensive it was just on sale at anaconda or something <laughs> mountain design trim that off but yeah should be sweet a little bit of surface action hopefully we can get in those shallows and see if we can get those trout to smash it yeah let's get this anchor in getting better at this i'm getting better <laughs> we are slowly getting better i guess uh yeah like a lot of people will say oh you know you're doing this wrong. you should have done that or you shouldn't you know what i mean like there's a lot of things that you did wrong there and well, you could improve in here and there, but like, yeah, and I might get flooded a little bit. I know that this trip hasn't gone exactly perfectly, but the reality is, I guess, um, who said it once recently? I can't remember. It might have been the Back to Basics guys, but it's when, yeah, and I totally agree with this sentiment. It's like when things don't go just your way and things sort of start going wrong and you've got to adjust and change, that's when the adventure begins. Because like if you went on every perfect trip and it's just boring and nothing goes wrong and you got it nailed down, it's kind of not as exciting, is it? So we adapt and, and you know what? Every trip that I go on, something goes wrong or something happens or the storm hits or the, you know what I mean? So that's, that's part of the fun of these journeys because something breaks, something, you know, something doesn't go right and you have to adapt to it. And we made it through and we're, you know, we're, it's happy days. We're still having a great time. So I think uh, there's definitely like that sentiment definitely carries through. It's very interesting. Yeah. When, when things go wrong, that's the, um, when the adventure begins and uh, things didn't go quite perfectly to plan last night. <laughs> anyway, let's start moving up towards here and we'll uh, cast this little popper around. There's a little tuna, a little, probably a little mac tuna, just busting up over there.
You know what? I'm thinking maybe something a little bit uh, that goes subsurface might be a bit more fun because it's a bit lumpy here. I wanted to have a go with one of these. Ah, let's try that. That looks pretty good. Can get all twitched down. It's uh, slow, slow floating, so it'll. I can twitch it down and then it'll slowly float back up, which will keep it away from the reef. Yeah, that's good. A bit heavier as well, so I can cast a bit further. Yeah, perfect. So I can just twitch it down and even just wind it in like that. Just pause, twitch it down. <laughs> and then as I'm winding, it creates its own action as well. I was not expecting a fish then. It's just trying to get away from the uh, edges there. <laughs> what have we got? Oh, hello buddy. Little striped snapper. Oh, he's not a bad one, is he? Oh, not a bad one at all. <laughs> yeah, mate, you just jump down there. We'll get you off. Might get the pliers for you because you're going to go nuts. Right. Yeah, no, not bad. He's a great looking fish. And not a bad size at all. Go, mate. Oh, not happy. Let's get off this super shallow coral edge and we'll go into the center here. Put a little drop off, though. A good one. This is a better fish. Oh, look at that. Big trouty. Well, medium trouty. <laughs> Come on, mate. Oh, he's not happy. He is not happy. Do we just lift him in? Oh, oh look at that. Oh, let's keep that hook up away from my feet. I'm not in the mood for that. That's not a bad trout. I felt like a little, someone went for it and had a little swipe at it and I was like, oh, that, that was a decent strike. And then I thought, oh, I better just work it a little bit and slow down. Okay. I'll just leave that. Oh, geez, he's not happy. So I'm calling this guy as a bit big for my, uh, as a little bit big for me to eat. Oh. Look at that fish. That is a very nice fish. <laughs> That's the first good fish on that reel and rod setup as well that I wanted to catch something on. What a chunk. Look, he is not. Oh, okay. <laughs> See ya. Well, we're going to let you go in a sec anyway, buddy. Just trying to get a nice photo of you. Whew. Out of here, eh? That's a good one. That's a good one. All right, we'll move back around. We'll go and see if we can get the tent out. And then uh, we might move into the creeks for something different to do. Mangrove Jack is the goal. Yeah, let's get up and get tent. Well, I think we might just be rolling it up in a ball and uh, throwing it in the bin, but we'll try and salvage some parts for the boat tent.
Come on. Hey, ah, come on. <laughs> run, bro, run. <laughs> All right. Just mucking around. Let's get this done. Right. <laughs> this uh, trim plate works great by the way. See, I'm not, like I can trim up a little bit, but as soon as I put the power down, see how the nose doesn't really lift at all? And then if I want to then straight away I trim up. And then we're at speed on the plane and we didn't have to lift the nose, it's great. Pretty impressive actually. The colour's so vibrant. Remember the first time I saw it, I was like, man, I've got to bring my family back here and check this little spot out. Still haven't done it yet, but we're going to do that now that we've got the new boat. It's pretty special. Uh, you better get this in pretty quick. Oh, of course I'm going to get hooked. I'm sure I had something. Here we go. I reckon I've been dying to give these a go. Hopefully, with the little back hidden there, it should keep me out of the sticks to a point. Now, we'll leave you on and we'll go with this lighter setup. Right. I didn't get caught on that one. <laughs> I think that was a little hit then. Not big, but something had a little, probably tiny little jack or something. Bummer. some flatties or something else yeah this is uh, not happening not even getting anything Something had a good go then. I don't think it's a flatty with that kind of strike.
This looks amazing. <laughs> Not very clear, but it's definitely a few trees I could shelter in and maybe go for a dive around here. I don't know if I'm expecting anything too exciting, but as long as we can get something to eat, it doesn't have to be big or too fancy. It's nice and protected here though, that's for sure. Seven. Just keeping in mind that it is going to get low tide and it's going to drop way more than that. <laughs> All right, let's go and bask in the shade for a little bit, I think. It's damn hot. Yeah, no, this is very nice. <laughs> like, have a go. It's amazing. Um, I think uh, now that my tent's all ripped up and the fly screens and everything don't shut, I probably can't really sleep on the beach because I will get smashed by insects tonight if I do. But we know we can sleep on the boat, so what we might do is we might anchor the boat just in one of these little spots. We'll keep an eye on how far out the tide goes. But look at this beautiful sandy beach as well. Super, super easy to anchor on and not stress out at night so uh we'll get down to that lowest tide point we'll find a spot maybe just over near these rocks where it's really super protected we'll anchor up for tonight and i reckon we just uh rest up in the shade get past uh, this really intense part of the day and then we'll go for a little spear on either point here or figure out a nice little spot and then get something to eat and i reckon we just stay here tonight it's too it's <laughs> it's too nice to pass up look at it it's amazing. So we just push her out. Might actually just pop it just over here and uh, jump in there and do those rocks there. Stick is coming off. We're not going to be picky. Just anything to turn into a yummy wraps or something. <laughs> so it could be any fish, really. Let's go.
take off a bit first. Nice. Perfect size little tusky. No waste today. We just got changed and uh, dried out the gear. Just rearranged a little bit uh, so we're ready to rock. But, um, yeah, no, I think I'm just going to stay here. I can't see any real reason to uh, move at this point. It's, uh, it's nice and protected and that wind definitely has picked up. You can see, I don't, know, well, I don't know if you can see, but there's a whole stack of white caps as soon as you get around that corner. So it's not going to be the best time to be making a right dash for it. But tomorrow morning, I'm sure will be a lot nicer. The wind will drop and maybe I think what we'll do is we'll do what we've been doing recently and the last day is all about trying to catch stuff to take home. See if we can get something for the family and also get something uh, for maybe a catch and cook when we get home. And uh, I've got this new barbecue and I'm raring to go with it. So if we can get like a nice trout or a nice big tusk fish. How was the size? I don't know if it came up on the uh, footage, but I saw a tusk fish, like a black spot tusk fish. Uh, that must have been like half the size of the spear gun. It was massive <laughs> and uh, I didn't take a shot because I didn't have the camera on and then by the time I turned the camera on like with those tiny of tu like with those tuskies you really only get one real quick look at them before they take off and uh, probably might have been able to get a shot on him in first go but then I would have had to have run home anyway so I'm glad I didn't once again but uh, it was a big one it was a big one it would have been a trophy specimen I think but we've got a small little tusky and they're like very good eating just like the black spots so very very happy with that and we saw did you see when i speared that uh tusky i just got him hidden under here but when i did spear him did you see all those trevally that bigger trevally come in and take a look at what was going on so it was full of life actually even though the clarity wasn't there it was actually quite lively and i think maybe tomorrow morning maybe we can have a cast and maybe a spear just around this corner before we shoot off that might be the go-to move and down it's time to cook dinner but i think um because i don't have salt i'm not that enthusiastic about what i was going to cook all of a sudden so i had plans on cooking something but um, I think without salt and pepper, it's gonna be pretty bland and average. So what I might do with this tusk fish is I'm just gonna sashimi it, cause then I've got soy and wasabi, and then I might make a nice cabbage salad with some onion and garlic mixed through and some mayo. And then, you know, then that way I'm eating something that I really do feel like and is gonna be delicious, rather than sort of eating something that's a little bit bland and I'm pretending it's nicer than it really is because what I really want is salt. God, that sun is still intense. Uh, so we might as well just uh, fill this down and cut it up. So what do we need? We've got our kitchen stuff out, but we'll need our little chopping board. And we we'll guess we'll do it on this side because there's sun. And I'm just dying for that sun to go down just a little bit more. So a different type than the black spot tusk fish, but very similar taste and equally as delicious. Arguably one of the tastier fish you'll ever get, actually. So certainly not uh slumming it i know i was saying i'd take anything uh but this is actually not like a sacrifice this is not a b team <laughs> fish this is an a team fish very good table fish Just fill it. Gonna need to get a bigger chopping board, aren't I? How am I gonna do this? <laughs> I guess we'll just start chopping or we'll move it across to that uh, little pot over there.
gagné. board to make it look pretty but the reality is after this I'll probably eat most of it out of the pot <laughs> uh, it's not looking pretty Ruined it. Mm. Yeah. Mm, that wind's picking up There we have it. That is a good angle. Look at that. Oh, well, that looks pretty good to me. I'm very much looking forward to this. I haven't eaten all day once again. I guess we just sit right here. Yeah, so look, I know it's not as fancy as some of the other meals we've been making, but um, to yesterday and today uh, on this trip it's just about simplicity I think and just getting back to the fun of the solo camp uh, we made some pretty elaborate meals over the last couple of uh, well, maybe the last or well, the Sydney trip really so I'm more than happy just to go back to the basics and like to be honest you can't beat it this fresh let's get a little bit of wasabi a little bit of fish let's get two bits of fish eh if we can, a little dip. Mm. That's so good. Ah, got a fishing rod in my head. Oh. Mm. So good. Man, I am hungry. Let's get a bit of salad. Oh, it's a lot of salad. Mmm, mmm, salad's delicious. I definitely need that salad. Alright, well hopefully this wind drops and we'll see you in the morning. I'm going to sleep right here. <laughs> I think our anchor's nice and secure, so we'll just sleep here on the boat so we don't have the same dramas as we did last night. See ya!